When you're working on a project in a video editor, you often have to add keyframes to adjust different parameters. In DaVinci Resolve, there's a bunch of different locations that you can add keyframes. Today, we're gonna to take a look at adding keyframes and editing them on the edit page. All right, so working with keyframes is pretty simple. I believe most people understand how to do it. Uh, but we'll just go through the basics and then we'll go through a couple of different ways to modify keyframes as well. So we bring our uh, piece of content onto the timeline and we have it here. Let's just cut this down just a little bit. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to bring up uh, audio waves so that we can see those. And it doesn't seem like this particular clip has much audio. Okay, there's a little bit there, but we'll just bring in some uh, music too, just so that we have something that shows audio a little bit better. All right, so now, uh, most cases, what we would do is just click on the clip that we want to adjust keyframes or add them in, and we click on the inspector. And what you'll see is, on the right here, there are these little diamonds, and you can click on them, and what they'll do is they'll add a keyframe with whatever the parameters are. So if we were to, let's say, start here, I'm gonna turn this off, but let's say we start here, and we add a keyframe, now we have a keyframe there that states that at that point in time, we add, we have to make sure that the clip is at 100% opacity. We can move down, and because we have keyframes active here, you can see there's a little arrow showing that there's a, a keyframe previous to the location that we're at. Um, because it's active, if we add something in now, it's going to automatically add a keyframe for this particular area. All of these, work the same exact way. If we were just to change something, it's not going to add a keyframe until keyframes are active. So to activate it, we just click simply click here, move a little bit, and then we can adjust it. Um, if we need to go back to edit one, we can go back and edit one. But there's, it's not very visual seeing it like this. Yes, you can see it on the side here, but you can't see throughout the process of the clip. Maybe you have multiple clips or you're trying to time a particular section in your audio, it's kind of difficult to see it. Once you add keyframes, you'll notice that you have these little handles here that appear. And if you click on this one, it'll just show the locations and then what, the, what these particular keyframes correspond with, like what are they doing? And those locations, or those are just you know stating here and here. If we want to edit them, we could come in and we could just move them left or right, but we can't change whatever that value is. We can only change its timing. If we click this button, now we can see those keyframes. So we could come in and we could say, okay, 100 opacity, no, let's turn this down to 84. And you know you can move these around. Um, if you were, if you wanted to then add additional keyframes, and I think a lot of people are used to adding keyframes this way, is by picking a random location and clicking to add a keyframe. But if you just click, it doesn't add it. You have to hold Alt to add that keyframe. So let's say I add a keyframe here. I hold Alt, I add another keyframe there, and then you can just continuously keep doing that. And you can do that for the audio as well. So if we were to say, okay, uh, at the beginning of this audio, let's try to make this so we can see a little bit of everything here. Let's say for this particular piece of audio, um, I want it to, uh, let's come to the beginning here, and I'm clicked on here. I wanna activate the keyframes here. So now I have a little bit of uh, uh, an adjustment going on, and then we can add another adjustment, right? And we can increase it. But these are kind of very linear keyframes, meaning that there's no deviance you can't add any like um, ease in or ease out um, when, you're, when you're just working with keyframes by adding them like this. So if I was to add something very sharp, it's gonna be a very sharp, you know, it's not gonna be smooth at all. So those actions are going to happen and they're not gonna be very smooth, right? So to add, to make things a little smoother, let me um, make something a little easier here. Let's do like rotation. So if we add it rotation, and we came in here and add rotation, and if you double click on the name, what it'll do is revert back to whatever the default is. 
So by double clicking here, it added a keyframe at zero. So now I have it rotates and then it rotates, but it doesn't, it's very linear. So we wanna add some easing into this. And to do that, we would just highlight whatever keyframe that we want it to have the easing on, let's say this one, and we can add a handle after the keyframe, we can add a handle to both sides, or we can add a handle before. So let's add a handle before, and now we'll see our little handle here for easing into that keyframe, and we can adjust this to you know dictate how the those parameters will uh, at, you know go into this so it's starting to slow down with that spin um, there's kind of a lot of stuff going on here so let's just uh, reset everything okay so we'll start at the beginning here add a keyframe come up a little bit add another keyframe take a look at those so now for this one we will add a handle to both sides then we can uh, move these around but let's say we just wanted to move one of the hand, one of the two handles. So we wanted it to ease like, let's say like this, but we wanted this handle to ease, but in a different way, in a different manner. What we do is we'd hold alt and then we'd click on this handle and then we can move that handle individually. So that's how we would, uh, you know, add some easing into these keyframes. The other thing that we can do is let's say we want to change these two keyframes. It's a little easier to explain it on audio. So let's go into audio. Let me make this a little bit bigger. But let's say we want it to, uh, for these two keyframes, let's say, uh, let's just add another one down here. Let's say in between here, we want it to change the amount that these two keyframes are. If we are ever in the, in the middle of two keyframes, we will adjust those two keyframes, okay? So let's add another one down here just so we can see this changing. So we're in the middle here. We're adjusting just these two keyframes. If we come in between here, we'll adjust just these two keyframes. They'll stay together, okay? And then if we wanted to, let's say, let's add a couple of keyframes in here. And let's say we wanted to move all of these keyframes. So we would just highlight them all. And then we would grab one of the keyframes because we don't want to move just two. So we don't want to do the middle action. We want to move all of them. We have them all highlighted. We'll just grab one of them. We'll grab this end one here. And when I move, when I'm on that one keyframe, all of the others will move. So let's move this one down, this one up. So it's a little easier to notice. Highlight all of them on the one keyframe and then we can shift them up and down, okay? If we have them all highlighted, but we still go in between two, It'll just move those two just like it did previously. So now let's highlight these three. We'll add easing in. Now it's a real uh, smooth uh, transition from one keyframe to the other. You can click on one. If we hold uh, control, I believe I said control before. If we hold control, you can move one of the sides and then control to move the other side. And then let's say we want to work on this particular video but we want to get access to the other parameters. So we could just click in here, and now we have all the different parameters that we can adjust with this particular clip. So like, let's say we wanted to do the uh, zoom. When you click on here, we'll get a line here, right? And it'll say zoom up here, because that's the one that's active. If we click on one of these uh, ones that are uh, darker, It'll bring them, it'll make them the focus. So we can click on this one again. And then we can just hold Alt, click, and add some uh, keyframes, right? If we wanna work on a different one, we can just click on it, and then it'll bring it to focus, so then we can work on that particular keyframe. To jump back and forth between keyframes, we use our brackets, and that will enable us to jump between the keyframes. And that's kind of the gist of using keyframes on the edit page. The other pages have keyframes of their own and they all work a little bit differently, like on the color, um, the keyframes look a little bit different and they work a little bit differently. Um, if you follow my channel a little bit, you've obviously seen me use the fusion keyframes where they have two different areas. They have the keyframe editor and then they also have the spline editor. This is kind of like the spline editor 
uh, on the fusion tab but um yeah that's kind of that's kind of the gist on how to edit keyframes in davinci resolve and also if you go to my website at the top i have a join group if you join my group um Throughout the weeks, I'm going to be asking for questions so that you guys can submit questions and then I can answer them in a video, um, hopefully in the next week or so. So stay tuned to that. Uh, and with that being said, my name's JR and thanks for watching.